Iris does this weird thing with a countdown timer to make you feel like you're in a, in, in a studio. <laughs> Which we are. Yeah, it's, we, we it's are. Very special. Yeah. Yeah. very professional, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get your audio sorted out, Sir Royce? Yeah, I just gonna, was going to uh, test it out. Can you guys hear me better now? Is it any feedback? Any crackling? Yeah, that's great. Can hear you good. No, okay, good. Yeah. This, I think your beard was getting in the way. Yeah, I think it yeah, was hitting my, uh, my Bluetooth <laughs> somehow, some way. <laughs> well, have we done with the housekeeping, Pete? I think yeah? so, yeah. Okay. We all know where to go in the case of an exit or fire, where your nearest exit is. Pete always likes to say that. I know where I'm going. You, you, everyone else has to look after themselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's kick this off. Uh, I want to welcome you, Scott and Sir Royce, to the Six Star Business Podcast. Pete and I are super excited. Uh, we were chatting about this the other day and yeah, I'm, I don't know about you, Pete, but I am excited about this. Welcome, Scott, and welcome, Sir Royce. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Now, just to kick things off, it'd be great for our listeners to know where you are in the world. We are a very uh, global podcast. Our, our guests come from everywhere. So to kick things off, how about we, you just let us know, first of all, introduce yourself, where you are in the world, who you serve, how you serve them, and maybe something that you like to do in your spare time. Um, who would like to get started? I guess I get the party started. I am, uh, again, it's uh, Sir Royce Brialis. I am the uh, co-founder of an organization called Welcome to Fatherhood, based out in Chicago. Been doing it for about five to six years. We help dads everywhere showcase their superpowers to the masses. So that's a little bit about me and uh, what I do. And on my spare time, I love sports. I'm a sports buff and I love music. So any music recommendations, I'm open to it. So <laughs> fire away. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I imagine as the founder of Welcome to Fatherhood that you are a father yourself. Yes, I have uh, three children. Yep, nine, five, and four. So wow. no, nine, six, and four now. Just had a birthday. So yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> time is flying. They would keep you busy at those ages, Sir Royce. Oh yeah, big uh, time. <laughs> Scott, how about yourself? Your audio is gone, Scott. We we checked it earlier and it was uh, it's fine. You're off mute, but we can't can you hear you. Me? How's that? Yeah, we can now. Back now. Ah, Back I was now. saying that. Yes, I think uh, poor poor Sir Royce, Sir Royce doesn't have a chance to shave with those young children around. And interestingly enough, Sir Royce, <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's actually almost exactly on the opposite end of the world to me. So he's in Chicago. I'm in Bali, Indonesia. And if you literally look outside my front door porch here is a beautiful swimming pool and right onto the ocean and it's yeah it's abs it's absolutely beautiful oh. here and yeah yeah no, it's <laughs> terrible terrible yeah we just came from a, from an hour and a half swim there's a wreck that's just out here so you can dive the wreck i'm a kind of amateur so i like kind of holding my breath or trying to and there's this incredible wreck so we just came we came swimming from there but my as you can see i've got a little bit more time to prepare myself because my son's are uh, in university he's doing law at the age of 20. So he's out of my hair, Sir Royce. Yeah, you've just got a couple more years to go. <laughs> yeah, just about 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott, how do you, who do you serve in the world? What is it that you fill your other time with? Uh, small businesses. Free diving. Yeah, small, small businesses. Yeah, to give them every opportunity that they can possibly have in the world. We create and we'll talk about it, I'm sure. We, our, our goal is to find very innovative, very cost affordable ways of reaching new customers haven't been thought of by anybody else. But I'm, I'm a small business passion. I, I came out of university, I could, uh, didn't have much money, came from a typical kind of middle class kind of family. And uh, I was sick of ordering from the bits, the bit on the menu, which had the cheapest price. So I became an entrepreneur from day one, and I've always had my own business since then. So I'm just hugely passionate. I want small businesses to, to take over the world. I think you could be a little bit more passionate about that, Scott, but you can work on that during the during this podcast. <laughs> no, that's great. It's great to it's great to hear and to feel and to experience and to tap into 
uh, and I'm sure our listeners will get uh, will get some of that. In, ter- in terms of story, we like hearing people's stories on this podcast. But in terms of story, the, the one I'd like to, to start with, so Royce is your name. We touched on this briefly when you and I had a chat uh, a, a couple of weeks yeah. ago, because in the UK, you can only call yourself Sir when you've had a tap on the shoulder from the Queen. So it was really cool for me to, I wasn't sure who was going to show up on the call. And I, oh, I'm, I'm speaking to a knight of the realm. <laughs> so what's the... What's the story behind your behind your name, Sir Royce Brialis? Yeah, so I'm also a podcaster too. We have a podcast called WTF Interviews, where we interview dads. And my the co-founder of Welcome to Father, he's a doctor. So I call him Dr. Raheem all the time. And he's not a fan of it. I'm like, why don't you use the doctor? You went to school for eight years. You got this authority. Use it. And uh, we were on the podcast, kind of giving him a hard time about it. And uh, at the end of it, I was like, I'm going to call myself Sir. Was, uh, looking at my family history, my, my brother went back to like the 1300s, like on Ancestry.com, and he found like we have lineage to kings and queens in our family. So I'm like, I might as well get connected to that. So I'm like, from this point forward, I'm knighting myself, Sir Royce Brialis, and it's been taken ever since. It's been uh, it's been pretty cool hearing people call me Sir. There, there's something <laughs> there's something six star about that, isn't that? It's kind of just yeah. setting the setting the mark. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, I love that you've just created a, a way to enhance your name and the way that you, I guess, show up in the world in terms of what you call, we, we all have these names, right, of what we're called. And you've just kind of taken yours to another level. Yeah, it's kind of like a branding myself in a way, like my claim yeah. my own brand. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty cool. I've been hearing people of doctors, lawyers, like, hey, Sarah Royce. I'm like, hey, that sounds pretty cool. I like that. Let's keep it going. And, and in some way, it, it, it kind of um, helps you set an internal accountability standard for yourself as well because not anybody is a knight of the realm not anyone can call themselves a, a sir you're a particular kind of person that, that you're kind of almost like oh. internalizing that that sense of of what it means to be a knight of the realm i think it's i think it's wonderful i think it's a great example yeah and peter i've been i've been looking into like wardrobe updates trying to see like how does a sir dress i gotta really like think about this like <laughs> i need a different kind of shirt i think if I'm uh, going to be this sir. Yeah, and what time, so, what time I, did I the sir uh, wake up in the morning to do a podcast? Well, uh, it's at, at night normally. So we normally record like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like at 7, 7 p.m. or like 11 a.m. at the very earliest. But I'm an early bird. Typically, I wake up 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Uh, I like to go out and walk, uh, take walks during the sunrises and really like get out in nature. So uh, I'm an early bird by nature. But, but yeah, as far as our recording schedule, we do it from nights, sometimes like early afternoon. And you have a podcast too, Scott, don't you? Yes, at scottcundle.com. I interview uh, small businesses and specifically around uh, something called the Captivating One Liner, which is uh, one line I sit with businesses to help them, you know, stop talking about them and start talking about the pain of the audience. Because when you, aren't you tired of going to a networking event or having a group where people just talk about them all the time? It's really nice and, and so refreshing when somebody comes up to you and says something that actually is invigorating and, and is something about you and or the pain of somebody else. And that's, by the way, Sir Royce, that's the first thing that struck me about with the first thing that you talked about. And I think it was um, all credit to the question that Evelyn came up with at the beginning around who do you serve? You know, the first thing you said was we serve dads. We had to, you had to help dads and their superpowers. And that's brilliant. I love that. That's the kind of thing we want to do. It's not, a, it's, you, you're not, oh yeah, I sell insurance. Uh, would you like the cheapest insurance? Yeah, I think me and you talked about that, Pete, when we first talked about getting reached out to on LinkedIn and how people just want to sell you their stuff like immediately, like, here's what I do, here's what I got to have, here, here's my link to this and that. I think that's disingenuous. You don't really, people, overall, people don't really care about what you do. They care about what they do. So the way I approach, I ask people about what they do all the time to, to learn more about people opposed to what I'm doing on my side. Because nobody cares about what I'm doing until they actually talk to me about what they're doing. Mm. Mm. Exactly. I totally agree. There's something, and I'm sure it's deliberate, Scott, there's something, captiv- there's something in itself captivating about what you said about a captivating one liner it's kind of it kind of ho- hooks you what is That's it goal. yeah for, well, that, not, not, only, not, not only for our sake but the sake of our listeners what, what is a captivating one liner 
Well, I'll tell you the, uh, the story of, of how it came about very quickly. So we had a, a client that used to send out brochures and they did steel, they made steel balustrades and staircases. So they would spawn out their brochure via email and whatever about how great their balustrades were. So we stopped them and said, listen, this is not working for you for a reason. You're trying to sell. So we said, who are you targeting and what keeps them awake at night? So in Sir Royce's case, it's quite easy. We all know what keeps a dad awake at night, but for other businesses, <laughs> it's quite difficult. So what's keeping your target audience awake at night? And they were targeting architects. So we said to them, right, what is their problem? And there was a lot of issues that were going on around specifically around safety. So when you have, when you create these balustrades that got these, I mean, they were beautiful staircases they used to create, but they would have children that might fall under them because they weren't made properly. And there were old issues around old people. So there was a security issue. So instead of going out and saying, we have the greatest balustrades, they focused on architects and their captivating one liner was saving lives, one balustrade at a time. So we went out with that captivating one liner and that just changed straight away. So they said, architects, we've just, we've written a video, we've made a video, we've written an article, we've whatever content called saving lives, one balustrade at a time, specifically around balustrade safety. Can we engage around this common issue that we're facing? And it just went ballistic, just went crazy. So that is an example of a captivating one liner that gets somebody actually listening to what you have to say, because you are credible, a credible authority. So Royce used the word authority around a particular topic that affects me, not you. That's the secret. I had a little shiver down my spine when you when you gave that captivating one liner, and I'm not even the target effect. audience, but it was just. To... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. There's so much for me to just process there. I'm wondering, Sir Royce, uh, what was it that I guess got you sparked the idea to create this business to support fathers? What happened? Can you tell us the story yeah, of how it came about? So, yeah, sure. So me and my colleague, we were basically childhood friends. I told you about Dr. Raheem. I met him when we were in kindergarten. So we were five years old, we met each other and we're in our mid thirties now. So that gives you kind of context of how long we've been knowing each other. But back in the early to mid two thousands, we got into real estate out here in Chicago and the real estate bubble happened in the U S which caused a lot of, a lot of, you know, turmoil and people lost their real estate and we stopped doing real estate after that. So, but we still had that entrepreneurial itch. So maybe like a little bit, like five to 10 years later, got back together, was you know, talking about business ideas. What can we do? to make an impact and the fatherhood came up because I was actually having my, my first son around that time. And uh, we were talking about let's doing something in relation to fatherhood. I went home that night, I literally Googled fatherhood in Chicago and it was like maybe one page on Google, but I, I Googled motherhood in Chicago and it was like 20 different pages on organizations like for mothers, which is needed. I mean, well, dads need help too. So at that moment, I was like, what can we call it? And, I, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. A welcome to fatherhood. And you, you break down the words, it's a WTF. So it, it's like, uh, <laughs> when you were coming to bed, I was thinking like, uh, you know, what the F? Like, it, it, it fits. <laughs> and you have a lot of what the F moments when you're a dad. So we became incorporated shortly after that. And we've been pretty much on the ground running ever since. So that was in 2016 when we got started. So yeah, we were about five years into it now. There's, there's <clears throat> excuse me. There's, uh, there's so much that I love about that story, even hearing it for the, the second time. But one of the things that really struck me when you were just given that brief snapshot there is that you, you said that you and your friend, Dr. Rahim, were they had the entrepreneurial itch and the words you said, you were looking for ways that you could make an impact. You, yeah. you weren't looking for ways that you could start a business so you could ma make a, a, a lot of money. And that, that sense of making an impact is one of the three pillars of a six star business. Why was that important to you as you were looking at your options about what to do? Yeah, I was looking into something that can, I can leave a legacy behind. So when I talk about impact, I mean impacting uh, not just the people that we serve, the dads we serve, but also my kids. And because at one point, some point, they're going to be dads and moms. So 
to show them an example of a dad or, or myself, an entrepreneur that created something that is going to impact other families and also my own. It just made sense from that standpoint. What's your view on impact, Scott? How, how does that, what does that word mean to you and, and in your business endeavors? Everything. You've got 12 to 15 seconds, for example, on LinkedIn to get someone's attention. Impact is the reason we created the whole captivating one-liner concept in the first place. Let's say, for example, Sir Royce wants to go out and, uh, and find potential dads on, on LinkedIn. It's, it's a bit complicated, but just to, over, just to simplify it a little bit, you can go out and say, hi, I, I offer support for dads. Okay, cool. Or you can go out, you can create that impact in 12 to 15 seconds. You can go out and you can basically say, um, just thinking off the top of my head, dads, your baby crying at night is driving your coworkers insane because of lack of sleep. You're immediately talking about their pain, not what you do. And then that hooks them in. So once you've made that initial impact, you've then got to do the follow through, which is your knowledge and understanding around that. But that's impact is everything. And we do that for all our clients. Literally, you've got 12 to 15 seconds. So you've got one line. So are you going to go out with somebody saying, I am, I've got the greatest fleet management company in the world. I have got the latest technology. I can manage all your trucks for you. I'm amazing. Come and talk to me now. Or would you rather go out and say to them something really powerful, like directors, if your fleet of trucks is an accident, you'll go to jail. You know what I mean? Because new laws have changed. So it's like, whoa, okay, hang on a second. Completely different turnaround. Like the latter example was shocking, but true. It can also be equally as impactful elsewhere as well. But if you don't make that initial impact in 12 to 15 seconds, whew, gone. That's really cool. And I, I don't know if you heard it, but when Scott was talking about the captivating uh, one liner, particularly with the example of the, the balustrades, there, there was a, 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 I don't know if it, if it was the purpose of this balustrade company, but there was echoes of purpose, like saving yeah. lives. You wouldn't normally equate a balustrade company with saving lives. Did, did, did you hear that? You want to talk to that Absolutely. at all? Absolutely. Yeah. So the, one of the things that I do with my clients and also in the Six Star business is we always, we talk about purpose as being that thing that's, I guess, an overarching intention or a purpose for being in business. And it speaks to what, you know, everyone said here already, but when I heard about the balustrades saving lives, to me, that was a, a bigger purpose. There could be a, a different way to label it if someone if it were to go through a, a process to figure out what that purpose is. Yet that was so purpose driven because it was all about saving lives as well as how do they do it? They do it through the mechanism of creating these safer balustrades. So it's not necessarily about making beautiful home interiors or constructing beautiful things or making them, you know what I mean? It's about constructing, creating safe spaces to live. So their purpose could be more about that. And that's what gets me going when I see a business that's tapped into that higher purpose. It's not a goal. Goals are the things that help you achieve that purpose. And the purpose is something that's really, it can be, might take you your whole career to achieve, but it's something that's so big, that's so meaningful that you keep working at it. Does purpose often or tend to come out, Scott, when you work with people? All the time, all the time. You know what? That's actually not true. It's not all the time. It's most of the time. That's kind of my role is to draw it out of them, is to draw that because a lot of them say, I just want to sell stuff. So my goal is to draw that out of them and say, no, that's not actually what you're trying to do is you're trying to look at their pain and then alleviate a pain. And that's usually linked to some sort of purpose as well. So I don't go and do kind of what a, what a kind of business coach would do and, and create that purpose within an organization. You'd like to think they already had it. But what I tried is just to create that little crumb, just something that when you go out with a message, that one message that you go with, please make it captivating, insightful, impactful, and talk about them. It makes such, it just, it changes everything. And so Royce did that right off the bat. This was not about you. This was about dads and their support. And immediately you gravitate towards him and it creates a kind of aff affection for what he does immediately. 
And it's also that beard. You just want to just hug him. Like, uh, he's doing some such good stuff. <laughs> and, I know what he's and that emotional bond, that emotional bond is your brand. It's your personal brand. It's right there. And that, and there it is. And all we've got to now do is get that emotional brand out to other people in a way that talks about them, not you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. A question for you, Scott, how, after you find out the pain points, how do you create content around that or drive engagement from uh, potential, I guess, customers or whoever's? There's actually a couple of ways of doing it. The easiest one is to start by doing a little two minute video. So we help write a script and it's basically three parts to the video. Number one, the rational part of the problem. Forbes magazine says that workers are losing 28% of their whatever time because dads are falling asleep at their desks because they can't stay awake at night. So it's rational. Um, after that, then you go, then you bring out the emotional. It's the purpose that Evelyn and Peter talk about. I want to help dads. I've been doing it. I've created this business for this reason. I want to help you because I get that feeling. So it's emotional. And then the third level is come join up with me. Give me your details. Let's have a meeting and I can help you with this. It's the kind of, I don't want to call it the sell, but it's the call to action. Two minutes, that's mm. all. So your content is a mm. two minute video. You dress it up in a pretty landing page. You go to Fiverr, one of those freelancing websites, costs you $50. <laughs> Somebody does your video beautifully for you. Bang, you've got all the content you need. Awesome, thanks for that. Yeah. There we they go. Want... Thousands of dollars worth of free advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. They want to hear you. They don't want to hear you selling a sales pitch, a two minute sales pitch. They sure as hell don't want to see you yeah. droning on for 15 minutes about your process. I call it chicken and the egg. We, our business is an egg. I'm sorry. Our business is a chicken. We are so in love with our baby chicken. And who's the biggest culprit as anyone to do with coaching, coaching or business coaching or anything like that. They have this plan or an acronym and it's a sales coaching and that usually have like acronyms like pasta or real and the R stands for this and the E stands for this. And they spend ages telling you how their process works and how they unpack this. You said it yourself, Sir Royce, no one cares. They don't want to listen to that. That's your chicken, right? <laughs> That's your baby chicken. What you've got to, what you really want to do is you just want to drop an egg, a simple little egg, which they understand easy, cheap, affordable. Here you go, do it. And then, the egg hatches in their business and then they fall in love with their own chicken, which is really your methodology, but you don't sell it to them. You let them co-create it. So whoever asks you which came first, the chicken and the egg, actually the egg comes first. <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy, that metaphor. I've never heard yeah. it spoken like that before. Yeah. Uh, Scott, that's brilliant. <laughs> the chicken what, what, and the egg. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of a joke. Oh, I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your, what's your bit of your backstory, uh, Scott? I mean, you say you live in, in Bali. You, you don't, you're obviously not, by your accent, you're not from Bali. Really curious about what's actually led you to, to where you are now was th to have such evident passion for helping small businesses succeed. Go back okay, as far so as you very like. quick, Yeah, I'll go very quickly. So I did, I was born in South Africa, immigrated to Perth when I was 12. I went to high school, university, um, did a university degree in commerce, then went back to South Africa, started a business when I was 21. And yeah, it just went on the whole roller coaster ride. Ended up writing a book called How Not to Start and Run Your Own Business. It's actually on Amazon. Order it and we'll let you know which comes first. It's actually not available. I don't think it's, I, I can send anybody a free copy. It's, it is available on Amazon, but it's really old. You'd have to find an old copy. So I'm, I, I don't need to sell the book, but it's actually written upside down. So when you read it, it's literally upside down because it tells you to do exactly the opposite of what most people tell you to do. So I wrote that, that book and then went through a really good patch in business. I created a CRM system uh, and then got into Kung Fu, like heavily into Kung Fu, like six days a week. I went to China a couple of times and really got into proper Kung Fu. And uh, I was on, yeah, went to the world champs with it, 
went to world champs with my son at the time. He won silver medal as well, which is phenomenal and really just got into martial arts. And then my business kind of started dripping, dropping a bit because I wasn't involved. So I got back in it and then decided to go fully virtual. So we got a team in South Africa, a CTO in Brisbane, uh, registered in the UK and moved to Bali and a team here in Bali. So we decided to create a completely in a country geographically independent business. So now we have clients all over the world and we live here in Bali and I get to free dive and explore. And, and that's what it's about. And I love, I loved your idea of six star business, Peter. And I, I don't know if you remember, but I told you I've actually incorporated the six star into my proposal because I, I love the idea so much, but yeah, it's all about small businesses for me. It really is. I hate dealing with big corporates. I hate them. I can't do it. It's just, they're on a different mindset. Small businesses are the future, the past, the present, and we just have to, we have to ignite them. True entrepreneurship is, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Scott. I love hearing people's stories. Everyone does. Um, uh, got a question. What does six star mean for you at, in, in terms of business? You've obviously been in business for so many years and you've got so much experience. So I'd love to get your insight into what it means for you. Yeah. Well, thanks to you guys. You guys made me think about it. It's, it really is. It's that element that has to make you really go that extra mile on top of the extra mile that you wouldn't normally have gone through. So no matter how good your business is, it, you've got to do something more. So what is that extra? What is that extra? So you've gone the extra mile. What is that extra mile on top of that? And that's where we had to really think a lot. And we still haven't got it right, but that, that's what it is for us. It's really that bit that goes, whoa, I didn't expect that from, from a company that would normally do what you do. And it could be as simple as like, we create a Facebook group with, all, with our clients in them and all my team. So at any time, day or night, there's a, sorry, Facebook group, a WhatsApp group. So literally they can, they're on WhatsApp to my entire team any time of day or night. That's just one little piece, but I'm just trying to give you examples of how, how we try to roll out the six star business idea in, in our business. That's brilliant. Thank you. So Royce, what does six star mean to you? Yeah, for me, I think it's uh, providing value in every stop, every step of the way is always thinking about the other person. How can I bring more value to that interaction? And it, hopefully it's a, it's a two way street value is getting brought back to me in, 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 in return. But I'm not thinking about that. When I, when I think about the interaction, I'm thinking about what can I provide and what can I give? Because giving is the best way to receive, in my opinion. I think one of the keys in what you said there, <clears throat> Sir Royce, is every interaction is that that six star speaks to that constant almost vigilant attention on what's going on right now so the fact that you exceeded expectations the last time or you gave great value last time is almost it don't it don't mean diddly squat it's like what about now what about right here right now yeah, exactly. Because I think that's how you build relationships. That's how you build friendships, like real lifelong relationships is by thinking about the other person, providing that value no matter what. And that's why, you know, I value our relationship here. We, we just met and it's like we, we've been friends for years. Like I know you a little bit better now every time we talk. That's the type of thing I like to, to do is provide value and build relationships over time. Mm. Those things are, are priceless to me. Mm. We actually added it to our proposals where we actually have six star business bonus at the bottom of our proposals. So once they've got everything that they, they asked for, we say, and we're just going to throw in this as our six star business bonus. You, that's how I took your idea and implemented myself. Hope you're okay with that. Do I have to pay a royalty? Or <laughs> <laughs> <that way? laughs> Absolutely. No, that's, uh, that's our gift to you, Scott. Oh, thank you, Evelyn. I'm, I'm, I like, I, <laughs> see, it's, it's about giving. I, I've got a question. So Royce, how do you feel? Is it a feeling like you're talking about it's about in every interaction and giving and building relationships. So is six star then more geared to intention? Is it emotion? Is it a feeling as well? Or is it an action? 
or both? Where does it I sit for you? Uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit of both because yeah, by taking the action, by, by providing value, you, you build that connection. And I think it, is, it goes bigger than just you trying to get a sale, you trying to get a certain thing from somebody, you're really trying to help that person out. So I think about it as if, if I'm giving value to somebody and, and uh, I don't get anything in return from it, I'm okay with that because I made that person, I made their day better. I made them smile. Like Scott, he said he liked my beard. So I think I provided value to Scott somehow, <laughs> some way. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think that's what it's all about. If, if, if I could spark somebody else to think that way, I'm making the world a better place. And, and where, as you reflect back on your life, uh, Sir Royce, uh, did, did you have any role models um, for that, that, that approach and that, that way of thinking? What's, what's your story? And again, you can go back as, as far as you like. Well, I would say I didn't have really too many examples of entrepreneurial type people in my life. But my uncle was really big in a church. So growing up, like I got a lot of examples from him from being selfless. Him and my grandmother are both handicapped. They have muscular dystrophy. I always grew up with being patient and always, always helping them. Mm. And I guess by default, that made me help other people. And, and I don't look at people and, and judge them based on how they are, how they look or how they, what they, what their lifestyle is. Cause I've seen every type from, from that aspect. And then get, going back to my dad, he had a bout with drug addiction. Like he was separated from my mom and, uh, he was in rehab. So I, I seen a, I seen pretty much every type of aspect of self-development from recovery to even physical with my, mm -hmm. with my uh, grandmother and my uncle. So mm -hmm. I've always had uh, that type of patient type of uh, outlook on the world. And um, thinking about ways to give back and help is it's always been kind of my, my compass, if you will. Mm. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you really did have that start of where you had to learn how to be compassionate from a very young age, right from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy. I can see it in my kids. They have some of that same that same light that I have as far as giving back. My daughter opens the door for me every time I get out the car tries to beat me to get to the door to push it open for me or hand me snacks, pizza or snack. I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> so that's you... something I would do. So that's, that's pretty cool. Wow. I'm, I'm super <laughs> impressed. Thank you. Wow. 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 I've got a quick uh, question for you. Um, in your background, there is a picture. I was wondering what the quote was. Is that a quote behind you? Oh yeah. It's like a collage. Me and my kids. I don't know if you can see it better now, but it says, uh, Father, neither an anchor to hold us back nor a sail to take us there, but a guiding light whose love shows us the way. And that's, that's my kids. Y'all can see. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Just yeah. just hold it up. I'm going to take a screenshot. Hold it up again. I'm just going oh, to sure. take a screenshot. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that's stunning. When I was um, doing martial arts, I, my teacher is a Shaolin monk in, from China, and he would break these boards. And obviously that's like kind of easy for them. But I often wondered, I asked him like, where do you get the power from? And he told me the movement creates the power. And I was like, okay, so anyway, the movement creates the power became quite interesting. And then he used to say, you've got, it's like a waterfall. If you want to break something, it's a waterfall. You don't actually put power in. You're actually very soft and gentle. That's the whole irony of Masters, the masters at martial arts are very gentle. That's where their power comes from. It doesn't come from a hard energy. It comes from a soft energy. But the waterfall effect becomes very interesting because if you take a waterfall that's 50 meters high and you watch the water as it falls down and you think about that, and as the water falls, if you watch it with your eyes, it just looks tranquil and it's like, like nothing's happening. But it makes such a splash at the bottom. And if the higher the waterfall, and it just can make, if you, if you go under that waterfall and it hits you on the head, you can't go underneath it, it'll knock you out if it's high enough. So you understand the power yeah. that actually gets created from water falling, but yet it's so tranquil all the way down. That's the power of building soft relationships throughout your life. And through, that's the mm. power. So the whole idea of the captivating one line is you've just removed the sail out of what you do. Just remove the sail, the selling part of it, mm. and focus on the relationship building. You think that you're not building relationships. You might think that you've messaged someone multiple times. It's your third meeting. It's not going anywhere. That's not true. It's just the waterfall falling down. It just hasn't made the splash yet. And if you keep going and let it make that splash, it's a complete game changer. 
that's the essence and that's it works in martial arts and it works in building relationships same concept we're all speechless i can't, <laughs> I can't tell you how much i love that yeah, what did you too. get what did you get from that sir Roy? That, yeah it's not about the splash you have to take the action first to get to the splash and that it's not like you said, Scott, it's not about the power. You're not, you're not going out with force and that, that big energy up front to build a relationship or create that first contact. It's soft. It's just from the yes. heart space and that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's 100% right. Mm. You will never be able to generate huge power if you put energy in right up front, whether it's a punch. And it gets really, this whole concept I can talk for days. it gets really interesting because you can have a, uh, they, they can also break boards up, not down. So it's not about gravity. It goes, so you can have an up, woods going waterfall so they can break things going up it's the same process the way their body works but if you put tension in or you go too hard up front if you put too much in you're gone finished you will never generate it you'll never generate power that way it has to be soft it's flowing if you watch tai chi masters everything's flowing tai chi masters can break boards and break anything they can smash stones anything in the same way anybody else can the highest levels of martial arts is all about understanding that your approach is soft and tranquil. It's only right at the end when you need it, do you suddenly put in the energy, that, that, that burst of energy. All the rest of it is building up, building up. So when that waterfall splashes, that's where the power comes from. Mm. Yeah. It's a wonderful metaphor for being six star, it seems to me. It is, you just, because no matter how- And, and it just, it, it, yeah. yeah. So I was saying, with the, as no matter how you keep going and every message that goes out, you have to not do it because you are expecting a response or you're expecting someone to buy from you. Mm. You do it because it's right, it's good, and you just keep building and you keep building and you keep building and you keep building and just let the waterfall go. And then eventually you make that splash. I've had clients that have come to me after my record is nine years <laughs> of, of them being on my database or whatever, just following yeah it happens and and that's it so the goal is to speed that up a little bit and there are ways of doing that but it really and that's what i, why I wanted to come to chat to you guys peter and Evelyn, and, and and meet your amazing guests because you have that philosophy and, and it's the connect collaborative idea as well it's the the go giver just keep going just keep doing good it will catch up to you in a good way hmm. oh. that's brilliant that's so heartwarming scott i'm I've got all these like zooms going on, little thought processes. And I'm just thinking to what you said, Sir Royce, before about how you just give. And it's also about the feeling. So, Scott, if we take the waterfall effect and apply it to any scenario, any business owner, but, you know, let's talk to you, Sir Royce. How can you, like, how does that sort of fit with your approach to things? Is, has that given you something extra to think about? Yeah, yeah, it does. It, it kind of puts uh, a framework around what I was saying about as far as giving, like uh, thinking about the steps in the process, uh, like how Scott was explaining the two minute video, like different ways to give a value. I think that's important, especially now, like everybody's on their phone. I could go down the street today. I see everybody looking down at their phone. So if they're looking down at their phone, they see my big, big beard smiling at them. Uh, <laughs> It's going to make them smile too. So thinking about ways that I can even put myself out there more to help drive my, my, my mission and my cause. That's very helpful. Hmm. Everyone? The other thing it makes me think of is there's so many gurus out there that teach you about the number of steps to take before you, you it's like to follow this formula you, you email you do this this number of contacts to try and get someone to take action and i've seen this for years and scott you've seen this for years and yet what you've just described with the waterfall effect takes away all of those frameworks or cookie cutter kind of processes to say actually if you just come at it from a very different perspective from a heart perspective from a soft energy giving natural perspective, it actually will land, the splash will happen when it's meant to. And some people are higher up in the waterfall, they take a little bit longer to drop, so it takes more time. 
Yeah, it is. And it's just, it was so profound. I mean, you yeah. think you, you're profound listening to it now. I just wait till you see it in action. And when my teacher was teaching me, he was literally, he was trying to show me these moves because even at the world champs, there's, you don't see the, the, what they call Fajian power, which is Chinese for explosive energy. And what happens with Fajian power is it's an explosive that gets created from your body and it comes from just below your belly button and you, your whole body sh almost shakes to, to create that power. But it, it does, it comes from that soft place. But even at the world champs, vast majority, almost all of them didn't understand that power. So your forms that you're talking about, your step process to follow step one and then step two and then step three, step four, this stuff, those are just like the forms or cutters in karate, whatever you want to call them, the sequences of moves that you practice over and over again. You can get those sequences of moves and be completely useless at them and get nowhere and absolutely nowhere. Or you can do one move and do it incredibly brilliantly and amazingly because you understand the essence. Same process. So you write about those, the gurus and their, and their steps and those steps can help you. You can learn, but you can do those steps and nothing will work because you don't understand the essence behind it. I do. I've, I'm almost speechless, which I, I will tell you is a pretty, pretty rare occurrence. There's just so much in what both of you have shared today. But one of the things that did not but at all, I don't want to negate what I've said. One of the things that did occur to me as you were talking, Scott, is that is that what, what can you say? How can you speak to a business owner that is perhaps under the gun in terms of maybe financial pressure or it, it, it seems relatively straightforward and easy to look at this beautiful waterfall that's coming down when there's, there's abundance and there's plenty. But when I need a sale right now, I want the splash right now. What? Any advice? Wow. Okay. That's a long answer. So I'm going to try and I'm trying to try and give you the short answer. If you built up your community correctly, you'll find a sale, you'll make, you'll, you'll find that sale, but it's, that's the logical part of it. You've got a good, you've got a community of people around you, reach out to them. Even if you don't have a, a big community, reach out to those you do have, you, you will get business from somewhere. You're not going to starve. That's the rational approach. The emo from an emotional, more esoteric side of it is you always have enough. You think you don't have enough. The number of times in my business, I thought, oh my gosh, we're going to run out of money in two months time. I'm not going to be able to it's always over and over again. You always think you don't have enough, but somehow you always do. So that for me is you just got to go in that knowledge. And it's like when you, when I'm free diving, so I became like an amateur free diver. What happens, right? Is when you're holding your breath and you go down, when you hit to like 10 or 12 meters, things change because of the Boyle's law, your breath hold um, the, the, the air in your lungs contracts to half. That means your lungs are now half. Once you start getting to 12 or 15 meters, it starts to approach like almost approaching a third of your lung capacity and you're holding, you go through this weird moment of extreme discomfort. Like you don't want to be there anymore. Your logical brain's telling like, what are you doing this? Like, why are you going like to the 15, 16, 17? Like, what are you doing? Go up. It's stupid. Like, it's just not necessary. You go through this extreme period of discomfort. But once you, and it takes a while, once you get over that period of discomfort, you don't, the discomfort doesn't go away. The, the, the worry that you're not going to have enough money is not going to go away for a long time for most small businesses. But what you can do is you can learn to understand that discomfort, push through it and realize you've got plenty of air to go down and you've got plenty of air to go back up again. So just enjoy the scenery, enjoy the ride. It's amazing. It's an incredible feeling, but that feeling of discomfort is horrible. It's not a nice feeling. And unless you've been down there, you don't understand what I'm meaning. You don't want to be there. It's horrible. You can get over it and you can learn to become friends with it. And then you can learn to just enjoy the ride. And then it will, you'll realize that you have enough air. You do have enough. I love how often, Pete, our conversations end up out in the stratosphere <laughs> in some spiritual galactic realm. It's like, bring it on. That's, Absolutely love it. Thank you, Scott.
You're welcome, guys. It's, it's approaching the top of the hour, Av. Do you want to ask your magic question? I, I will, reluctantly. However, it is a magic question, so you, we never know what we're going to get, right? So to, to wrap things up, uh, we always like to ask our guests, if you could just share one thing with our audience, just it could be as simple as a piece of advice or a step or something that you want to give to them, like the value you've talked about, Savoris, what would that one thing be? You wake up every day with a chance and a choice. So knowing that, what choice are you making to become a better version of yourself? And what chance are you taking to become a better version of you? And also your only competition is, is basically you, yes, you of, of yesterday. And how can you beat yourself from yesterday? And yeah, definitely in, in, in giving back and, and also knowing your purpose in life. If you know that, then you'll, you'll have a compass to get to anywhere you want to go. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Scott, uh, what would your one thing be? I want to say, Soros, that's beautiful, man. Um, you're a great human being, and I'd love to, to follow your story with what you're doing and putting together there. It's absolutely it's incredible. Yeah, I think for me, the movement creates, yeah. the, whether it's a waterfall, whatever, in your business, mm. it's the movement that creates a power. You can't sit and do nothing. You might not know exactly where you want to go, but you've got to take steps to get there. If you really don't want to write that document, the movement creates the power. Open the document onto your laptop, write the heading, and then go and make yourself a cup of coffee. But if you don't even open the document and write the heading, you haven't given yourself the movement that creates the power. Once you open the document and write the heading, you'll say, okay, while I'm here, I might as well write the first sentence. Okay, let's just finish the first paragraph. Okay, let me, and then before you're halfway through. So the movement that creates the power, the movement creates the power was a really profound um, uh, understanding in my life. And is now for, for us and our listeners as well. Thank you for that gift. Uh, I didn't hear it the first time you said those words, the movement creates the power. But when you just said it just then, is that Av and I have often thought of Six Star Business as a movement more than anything else, just because of the of, of what seems to be happening around it and the people that are becoming attracted. So when you said the movement creates the power, the Six Star Business movement will create the power to change the world and create, create that impact. I love that. Uh, I've got shivers running up and down my spine. I've had shivers running up and down my spine. Most of this conversation, just absolutely uh, amazing. You two are both awesome, amazing human beings, men, dads. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. being here with us in this container and sharing some of, of who you are and how you're showing up in the world. I love you both very much. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you Evelyn, so much. Thank you guys. You guys are amazing as well. Hey, thank you for all the work that you're doing. Incredible. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Sir Royce. Yes, yes. Thanks for the opportunity. I, I, this has been awesome. I definitely appreciate you guys. Yeah. Likewise. This is beautiful. The first pebble or the first drop from the waterfall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the egg. <laughs> the egg. Yeah. The egg before the chicken. That was another stimulating, thought-provoking episode of the Six Star Business Podcast. Thank you so much for getting this far. Please go ahead, like, subscribe, and give us a comment, review. Rating, if there was a six star, we'd love you to give us a six star rating, but to just go as, as high as you can. And if you want to continue the conversation with us and all the cool people who've joined us from the podcast, head on over to apply.sixstarbusiness.community. See you there.